Hello and welcome to our final presentation in this seven part series on Windows Server 2012 R2, the Essentials Experience. And in this series we're talking about the features and functionality that you used to only be able to get with the Essentials Edition, but you can now get them as an optional role in the Standard and Data Center editions as well. So in this presentation we'll take a look at things from the user's perspective. We'll talk a little bit about the user experience and also the various options that we have for remote access. So as we get started here, just a quick look at the agenda. We'll start out by talking about the Essentials Connector. So that is a new uh, program that we have uh, that really is a starting off point for some of the tools that you may be familiar with from previous versions. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. We'll also look at using shared folders and also SharePoint libraries. So SharePoint uh, integration is a new aspect to the optional Office 365 integration if you choose to use that. And we'll look at how uh, shared folders and SharePoint libraries can be used together and how they're different and things like that. We'll also take a look at remote web access. So this is the web portal uh, that we've had in all of our previous versions. And so we'll take a look at what's new there. And then finally, we'll look at the My Server app for both the Windows client and Windows phone. So those again have been incrementally improved from previous versions and we'll just take a quick peek at those. So I wanted to start out by taking a look at the Essentials Connector and kind of describing what that is. So in previous versions, when you completed the Connect Computer Wizard uh, for Essentials, you got the Launchpad application put into your taskbar and that started automatically when you booted up or logged into the computer. And now we've replaced that with the Essentials Connector. So taking some of the feedback that we've received and kind of tweaking the experience on the user end so that uh, it's a little bit more functional for them and gives them uh, things that they really want as opposed to maybe some information that wasn't as useful. So the Essentials Connector really has just a few things that it allows you to do. First, uh, you'll see that uh, when you right click on the little icon, that little green icon, and if you don't see this, this is kind of a quick tip too. This may be hidden as one of the optional icons in the notification area. So you may need to click that little up arrow button to see it and then you can choose whether or not that should only show notifications or whether it should show all the time. But when you are looking at it, if you right click on it, you'll see a few different options. And here you can see that we can still open the launch pad. Uh, this used to happen automatically in the past and now you can choose to do it if and when you need to use that. You can also use the connector to open the dashboard directly, which is something that you can do from within the launch pad. But if you just want to go straight to the dashboard, you can do it uh, more quickly here. And then finally, we have this new uh, component, which is keeping users remotely connected to the environment. So if they are uh, working inside the office, then connectivity to the essential server is not a big deal. But if you're working remotely, if you're outside of the office environment quite a lot, then it can be very handy to stay connected or get connected to the Essentials server when you need or want to use it. And the Essentials connector allows that to happen in the background. It allows you to automatically connect using a secure VPN connection over the internet. And this allows you to access those uh, different data uh, and different functionality of the essential server even when you are remote from the office. And this uh, can happen in the background. You set this up to stay remotely connected and it just uses the auto dial functionality of VPN to go ahead and, and get you connected back to the server. And this uses uh, SSTP uh, which is a, a flavor of VPN that just uses uh, the HTTPS protocol or secure web connectivity. So it's pretty firewall friendly and uh, becomes very seamless to the end user uh, in terms of when they need or want to use the resources on the essential server, whether they're local or whether they're remote. And again, you, this is something that you can choose when you're defining the different uh, users' privileges, whether they have VPN access or not. But this gives uh, just another way of working remotely and an easy way to stay connected to the essential server. Now the launch pad, if you do choose to go ahead and start that, remains largely unchanged. There's a number of different areas that we'll look at here in the next slide, but basically it helps the users uh, 
you know, especially if they're getting started with just the idea of having a server, gets them a, a jumping off point that they can use to do some basic tasks. Also, this can be extended in various ways by third parties. Uh, here on the screenshot, you can see that I have uh, installed the optional Office 365 integration. So then the Launchpad can become a jumping off point for that as well. Other third parties can extend the Launchpad f with different uh, features and functionality as well. So basically, the Launchpad has these uh, four main areas that it allows you to do. One is to, uh, is to look at the status of the client computer backup. Uh, so again, when you uh, connect your computer into the Essentials environment, by default, it will automatically back up that computer to the server uh, overnight or during whatever window of time that you have defined on the server. And you can also use the Launchpad to start a, a manual backup. So again, this can be handy for folks who maybe come in and out of the office or, or are out of the office quite a bit and they don't leave their laptop or what have you in the office uh, overnight or during that window of time. And so uh, they want to come in maybe for a meeting, they go ahead and get their computer connected to the network and they start a manual backup, go have their meeting, uh, when they come back, the backup is completed and off they go. Uh, it also is a jumping off point for remote web access. So this basically just launches that web page uh, that can go ahead and help them uh, interact with the server from a remote location. So we'll take a, a closer look at RWA here in a bit. Also, this opens up the different shared folders so that users can easily browse for and access the files that are stored on the server. And then finally, it uh, provides a link to start the dashboard. So this is used um, uh, as an example, if the administrator is uh, working on this computer, logged in as themselves, uh, as, as a standard user account, doing their work, then they need to do some administrative task. You can click on the dashboard, sign in with your admin credentials, and then uh, use the dashboard to perform any uh, administration tasks that you might need. So um, basically, the launch pad is, is this quick jumping off point. The biggest change, though, uh, that we'll see is that it doesn't provide uh, alerts like it used to before. So the feedback that we had received was that the alerting, especially to the end users, was often too noisy and a little bit too confusing. So in many cases, the end user did not want to have to know about or deal with the problems that may be happening, even if it was simple as, hey, you need some updates and those will be installed for you the next time uh, your computer automatically installs updates for you. Um, because these kinds of things weren't very actionable by the end user, uh, they just became noise and it just became confusing. And so we've trimmed that back and now alerts are shown in the dashboard for administrators who who really want to know about them and the end users don't see all these different uh, alerts on an ongoing basis so a little bit nicer of an experience than uh, for those end users <laughs> uh, next here looking at the configuration settings so this has been greatly simplified over previous versions of the launch pad primarily because of those alerts going away so now we're not necessarily interested in which uh, kind of alerts that we see or whether we see alerts for the whole network. We just don't see uh, any of that at all. But what we do see is whether or not we want to run the Essentials connector when you sign into Windows. And here also we can set whether or not we want to automatically enter offline mode. And basically what this means is do you want to automatically establish a VPN connection when it's needed, when you are trying to access those uh, resources on the essential server. So uh, if you if you check this box, then the next time that the user logs in or the computer gets restarted, they'll get a confirmation message saying that the uh, auto dial VPN is going to be set up for them. And uh, from then on, it's a seamless experience when you're connecting to uh, the essential server, whether you're local to the network or working remotely. So uh, that's kind of a quick overview of what gets installed right away for the end user uh, when they get connected to the environment. And uh, now I just wanted to take a few moments and talk about using shared folders and document libraries. So using sh shared folders is probably not something that's going to be super unique or super new to a lot of folks. It, even in peer-to-peer -peer networks, you often would share folders from one PC to the next. In the Essentials environment, what we've done is, is just provided a central place to store all that information. And so as users go into the Windows Explorer, they can see these different shared folders 
folders that are used for storing information. And it's up to each individual uh, customer or the partner that's helping that customer set up the different shared folders that make sense for that company. And here we can just, uh, you know, use the different um, folders to store information maybe on a departmental basis. You might have uh, folders that are used by the entire company as a whole. You may have a place where you store marketing data or sales data or so on and so forth. You can use the shared folders uh, as a way to control access to different uh, types of documents or, or documents of various content and give users access either on a read-write basis, a read-only basis, or provide no access. So for example, you might have some uh, HR data and you only want to have the HR folks to have uh, access to that information and you would want to give no access to, uh, to other users uh, to protect some sensitive information. Uh, as we look at uh, using shared folders, uh, it's good to know that the, uh, the, those shared folders support shadow copies so that you have access to previous versions. So basically, uh, the interaction from the end user's perspective is that they would just use uh, the familiar Windows Explorer interface and then they can see the different uh, folders that are available uh, on the essential server and interact with them just as if they were uh, you know, stored locally on that client PC. Now something that's new that we have is integration with SharePoint Online Libraries. So uh, if you choose to integrate with Office 365, this is a new uh, aspect, a new tool that you can use for collaboration. You can create users, uh, create libraries, uh, rather, in the dashboard. And then once they're set up, the end users can go ahead and interact with those. Uh, there's a number of, of reasons why you would use SharePoint Libraries versus shared folders. SharePoint libraries tend to be used for very collaborative uh, documents, things that are very interactive at that point in time. So when you have multiple people working on a document, uh, it can be great to have those in the SharePoint library. It supports sophisticated things like allowing multiple people to uh, open a document and make edits at the same time. So if you have Office uh, 2013 and you store a PowerPoint presentation or a Word doc on the SharePoint online library, uh, then multiple people can actually open that up at the same time and work on it at the same time. And they'll be notified uh, that different people are in the document together, uh, but you could work on uh, different sections of that same document and have those uh, different sections of the document uh, be updated in real time. So these things aren't possible to do if you're just using shared folders. Um, also, we have very sophisticated versioning settings that you can uh, use it with SharePoint libraries. But there are times when uh, shared folders are going to be better. So very large documents, say a large video recording, uh, they tend to work better stored on shared folders. Or documents that you're not uh, updating and collaborating on very actively can be moved to shared folders for longer term storage uh, and, and a, just a centralized repository so that people can refer to those uh, documents as needed. Uh, you can also uh, access using the SkyDrive Pro app that's downloadable for the local PC. So this makes it very easy. You don't need to access um, the online libraries through a web browser, although you can. You can also access them through uh, the familiar Windows Explorer. So on a uh, a user perspective, things are very similar uh, in terms of how they would interact with documents, whether they're stored in shared folders, whether they're stored in online libraries, uh, either one. The last thing that I wanted to talk about in terms of storing data is the file history integration. So if you uh, have users with Windows 8 or Windows 8.1, then uh, file history integration is a great way to back up that data and allow end users to get access to previous versions if they accidentally uh, overwrite or delete a file. Uh, the essential server acts then as just the central repository where all the file history data can be stored. So you can think of this as kind of a complementary feature to the client PC backup. Uh, it's, it's nice because the end user themselves can go ahead and go back to a previous version without administrative, uh, administrative assistance. 
Uh, one of the things that's new in 2012 R2 for the Essentials experience is that file history is now enabled on a per user basis rather than just a per PC basis. And this can make it really nice, especially if um, you're uh, a user gets a new computer and needs to restore all of their file history data. Uh, when they log in, the file history can detect that they have data on the server that's missing on the local PC and can copy all of that back down uh, to their local computer. So it just makes it nice to get restarted again on a, on, uh, a, new, a new PC or a new laptop. So you can select which folders to protect. Uh, generally, this is going to be uh, your documents folder, the desktop, and the different libraries uh, that you have defined, your favorites. Uh, and so uh, you have all of this uh, rich user data that uh, gets protected centrally on the, on the server. Uh, you can also set the frequency, how often uh, file history is collected. Uh, it can be as often as once every 10 minutes. It can be uh, just once per day. And you can also set the retention policy, so how long do things get kept. Uh, and this could be uh, kind of indefinitely until you run out of space, or you can choose to uh, refine that so that you use less disk space for file history. So the next thing that I wanted to, to talk about was uh, some of the remote access uh, options that you have, and starting with the, the remote web access portal. So we have had uh, remote web access for quite some time in Essentials and in SBS before that. Uh, back in the day, it was called uh, Remote Web Workplace. And uh, in general, the, the features and functionality are very much the same as they ever were but we continue to improve the interface, continue to improve how it works, especially with uh, touch-enabled devices. Uh, this uh, version, we have tried to align the experience to that that you'd see with uh, SkyDrive so that uh, it's very uh, seamless for end users uh, in terms of, you know, no matter what application that they're using or what experience they're using to access their, their files, it, it kind of looks and feels the same. So uh, what we have with remote web access is the means to provide uh, secure access, secure remote access back to desktop computers in the um, in the office network when you're when you're out on the road. This is also very useful for partners who can come in and connect to the server to do remote administration for their customers. It also uh, provides access to the shared folders in the environment, uh, and you can optionally install a uh, media streaming component. So uh, we talked about that in a previous module, how you can uh, install that on the server, uh, and this will let you str stream uh, music and video uh, for, uh, for the users through their web browser uh, from that, um, th that central uh, server. You can also define links to commonly used resources. Uh, these can be um, set up by the administrator, and they're just an easy way to go ahead and connect to resources that are appropriate for uh, folks inside the company. One of the very nice features of remote web access is the ability to change your password from a remote location. So if you're not connected to the computer and you don't have a VPN connection, maybe you don't have permissions for that or whatever the case may be, you can use remote web access to log in and go ahead and change your password. Uh, like the Launchpad, the remote web access interface is extensible by third parties. Uh, we extend it if you integrate with the Office 365 uh, subscription. So if you choose to do that, you'll see that in the in the remote web access portal as well. So basically what we have is a kind of a predefined, very nice, very easy to use web page that users can log into when they're out of the office and go ahead and interact with their server. So taking a little closer look at how Connect to Computers works. So basically, this gives you access from virtually anywhere you are, anytime that you need to do it, using uh, almost any device, anything that will support uh, an RDP connection or a remote desktop connection. And this will allow you to run applications or work with files or just basically have an experience that's very similar to being uh, right in front of the actual computer itself. So this leverages the remote desktop gateway uh, component of, uh, of RDS. 
of uh, remote desktop services. It provides a firewall friendly way to get through to the server. So it, again, uh, much like uh, SSTP, it uses the secure web protocol so that it can uh, easily go through firewalls. Um, it does require a, uh, an SSL certificate, so uh, you, can, um, you can use one that you have previously or you can uh, purchase a new SSL, SSL certificate to use to secure the interaction for remote users back to the, uh, back to the server. The target computer that you want to connect to when you're using this must support a remote desktop. So that means that Windows Home SKUs aren't going to be supported. You're going to need at least the Pro SKUs uh, to go ahead and, and have that functionality. Also, uh, only computers that are available uh, on a permission basis to the current user, the, cur the user who's logged into RWA, are going to be shown. So it's a security trimmed interface. If you sign in as the administrator, you'll see all the computers in the environment. But for example, here in the screenshot, you can see Craig's PC. If Craig logs in, he'd only see his own PC. He wouldn't necessarily see Terry's PC if he doesn't have permission to connect to that. Uh, one thing to note, and again, this has more to do with uh, Essentials being a role now available in Standard and Data Center. If you are using the role uh, with those additions and you do want to connect to uh, computers remotely, you will need RDS CALs. So this is uh, different than the Essentials Edition. So the Essentials Edition does not require RDS CALs, but if you're using Standard or Data Center, uh, and you're using the RD gateway functionality uh, that this uses, then you would need an RDS Cal. Uh, one thing to kind of point out here, uh, we talked about the fact that you can uh, connect with a uh, VPN connection, an SSTP VPN connection. So that is another way uh, to connect to computers in the environment, different than using uh, remote web access, which is uh, what we're talking about here. But if you do uh, create a VPN connection, uh, and you don't have to necessarily join the client computer into the Essentials environment to establish a VPN connection, you can go ahead and set that up uh, manually and use that to connect in. Uh, once you have that VPN connection established, you can go ahead and just use uh, the remote desktop uh, client connector to connect to computers remotely, bypassing RD Gateway entirely, and then that doesn't require an RDS Cal, even if you're using the standard or data center editions. It's a little bit nicer to be able to use uh, RWA, and it's a little bit more uh, simple from an end user's perspective to be able to leverage the RD gateway. Uh, so then that's a choice that you could make if you're using the standard and data center editions, whether you want to go ahead and provide those users with RDS CALs so they can take advantage of that, or whether you just want to use uh, VPN connections and just use the uh, RDP to go ahead and connect to, to desktop. So either one uh, works uh, in similar ways, just a, a slightly different user experience. So when we're looking at uh, working with shared folders uh, using RWA, it, it really tries to uh, prevent, present to the user a very familiar look and feel in terms of using that kind of folder tree uh, for navigation. You do have the little uh, check boxes where you can select multiple files to work with, whether you want to uh, download those or uh, work with those in various ways. So uh, if you're using Windows Explorer on your client computer and you've turned on the check boxes uh, as an example, then the, the look and feel is actually very, very similar. Uh, so as people get more into touch, uh, devices that can become an easier way to do things. So we actually see uh, this experience replicated then whether you're using the website or whether you're actually uh, using Windows Explorer locally. So you can do all the things that you would expect to see. You can uh, view the files by details or you can view them by icon. You can delete or rename. You can cut and paste uh, copy files. You can upload files to the shared folders. Uh, you can upload files individually. You can drag and drop a whole bunch and, and drop them on uh, to, the, to the interface. You even have the ability to upload very large files, files uh, up to two gigabytes in size. Uh, so um, basically you get uh, an experience for interacting with the server through your web browser in a way that's very comfortable for end users. You can also uh, 
use the RWA experience on mobile devices, whether it's a tablet or whether it's the browser on uh, a mobile phone. Uh, but we also have uh, applications specific for uh, mobile devices that you can use as well. So we'll take a look at those in here in just a second. Now again, uh, for media streaming, uh, this is an optional component, so you can choose to download the Windows Server Essentials Media Pack, and this will turn on the media streaming features so that you can have slideshows of photos, or you can stream media, uh, like music, or if you have training videos or promotional videos, uh, you can go ahead and stream those uh, to your web browser or to any DL DLNA compliant receivers. So uh, this is great. It's actually a feature that we've had since the uh, Windows Home Server days and uh, continue to make that available in the business setting. Um, we provide uh, smooth streaming using um, using the HTML5. Actually, all of the uh, web browser experience, all of the RWA experience is really leveraging HTML5, uh, and this is how we give that uh, really kind of next generation feel to the um, to, to that remote experience. So uh, if you choose to, again, use the remote uh, media features, the media streaming features, you can uh, go ahead and use those through the remote web access experience. Okay, so the final piece I wanted to, to talk about was the MyServer app. So we've had this for both the uh, Windows, uh, Windows 8 clients and the Windows Phone, and that has been improved uh, and enhanced in the uh, 2012 R2 version. So these are both available as uh, free downloads from the Microsoft Store, so you'll find this uh, on the Microsoft Store on your uh, Windows 8 experience, whether it's a tablet or a laptop or, or what have you. Uh, and you find it in the, uh, the Windows Phone Store as well for the phone devices. So as we look specifically at the app for Windows Client, it allows you to work with files in an offline mode. So this is really handy. So it'll automatically sync back when you're connected. So this is the only remote experience that we have that allows this kind of seamless offline experience. So if you have a, uh, a file that you're working with, uh, you are got it on your tablet or your laptop PC through the MyServer app, and then you get on an airplane or whatever it is that you do, and you're disconnected from the network, you can continue to work on that document because it's cached locally to your device. And then the next time that you uh, have connectivity again and get connected back to the essential server, then it will automatically synchronize that file back to that central location so that uh, your changes are, are backed up centrally and uh, that other people can see them and so on and so forth. So this is a really uh, nice aspect, nice feature of the MyServer app. It also provides some light administration uh, functionality, so administrators can use this to view alerts, view the status of their users, they can use this to reset passwords for users. It's not the full rich uh, functionality that you would get by uh, launching the dashboard remotely, either through RWA or connecting to the server remotely. But there's a lot of basic things that you can do uh, in terms of kind of day-to-day -day administrative tasks that you might need to do that can be done straight through the MyServer app. So some of the things that the end users would typically do uh, is access their their files and folders. So this integrates with the uh, Windows 8 search function so that you can transparently search across uh, all of your locations to find files, whether they're stored uh, locally on your uh, device or whether they are stored on the essential server so users can quickly and easily find those. Again, they can uh, open up, edit, create, delete uh, the files in their folders. You can also customize the application settings and this will allow you to control which account you're using to sign in with MyServer. Uh, also uh, tweak your uh, recent history, your customer experience settings, and so on and so forth. So these are just the uh, the settings that are available for the application just like you'd see in other uh, Windows 8 uh, apps. So again, some of the things that administrators can do, there's a page where you can view the different alerts. Uh, you can uh, ignore or uh, disable or re-enable uh, alerts as you review them. You can view the different uh, servers and client computers in the in the network. You can also use this to initiate a manual backup of a uh, 
of a computer that's connected to the essential server and you can uh, use this to view uh, user accounts you can even activate uh, or deactivate an account using this interface and again as I mentioned uh, go ahead and reset user passwords so we have a similar uh, experience for the phone device uh, it's a little bit different in terms of uh, what you can do and the way it looks but uh, many of the features are quite similar so you have a quick status panel that will show you a summary of the status of the server uh, you also can do again some light server management tasks so again you can view your alerts and the devices and the user accounts you can uh, go ahead and um, reset passwords. On the files panel, here's where you'd have access to uh, shared folders and files like before. Uh, there's a panel for uh, recent activity, so it just keeps track of the things that you've used recently and gives you an easy way to access those. One of the things that uh, the Windows Phone app lets you do is uh, have access to streaming media. So again, if you've installed that optional component, you can use your phone to uh, remotely stream uh, music or video uh, right to your phone, so that can be uh, handy as well. So uh, lots of things that uh, we've talked about today in terms of the user's experience in working with the Essential Server, uh, but uh, there's quite a bit uh, still to, to take a look at and learn. So as some next steps, I wanted to just uh, make sure that you had uh, access to and knew about these resources. So we have tons of technical information in the Windows Server Essentials Tech Center, so please do check that out. We have a very active blog, so if you aren't already uh, subscribed to the blog, RSS feeds, great way to go here. Uh, you can join us on the Windows Server Essentials and Small Business Server blog. Uh, we also have a support forum that's monitored uh, not only by uh, folks from our dev team, but also uh, the MVP community is very active in our forum, so please do join us there. Uh, for additional product information, you can take, out, uh, take a look at our product pages, both for uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 All Up, as well as the Essentials Edition product page, where you can find uh, data sheets that you can share, uh, as well as white paper, which will go into more detail about the different areas of the product. Um, <clears throat> I also wanted to make uh, sure that you were aware of our Ahead of the Game campaign resources. This is mostly for uh, partners watching, uh, so that you can go ahead and leverage those uh, to help inform uh, your small and mid-sized business customers about essentials. So a lot of great information there, so please do check that out. We have uh, a bunch of additional resources for partners that I just wanted to uh, include in the deck and make sure that you were aware of. And uh, a little bit of information, again, I just want to include this slide on how to buy uh, so that you are familiar with all of this information. And finally, some uh, product and licensing resources that you can use as well. So uh, a lot of different programs that the product is available in. Uh, and so you can uh, look at these and decide which is the most appropriate uh, method for you. So with that, I'd like to thank you for joining me for not only today's presentation, but hopefully uh, you've joined for all the presentations in this series and uh, found that valuable as a way to learn about the uh, Essentials experience, again, available not only in the Essentials edition, but now as an optional role in the Standard and Data Center editions as well. So thank you very much.